So do you use data, the, the post-game data to analyze the performance of your players and, and use the data to improve their performance? Uh, it's just a guide post. Mm -hmm. It just helps guide our training and where it might need to be. You know, I don't, it's not a, the end all be all. So, mm -hmm. you know, data is very important and for, you know, me and my players when it's available, uh, plus of mine, your plus plus minus is is one of the most important things that or one of the big things that we like to look at how much impact you had mm -hmm. on the game. But, you know, it gives me a rough understanding of what happened in the game. But to me, the the analytics that I, I'm more interested in sometimes that relate to training are not so much captured in the stat sheet. So if you're missing a lot of shots, well, where are you missing? Are you missing left? Are you missing short? Are you missing long? How are you missing? Where are you missing on the court? Are you missing mostly on the right side, left side? Are you missing off the dribble, off the off the catch, off the dribble, close out, no close out? I want to know why you're missing, how you're missing, when in the game are you missing? Are your misses coming in the fourth quarter, or are your misses coming early on? When are they coming? So like that type of data is not really show up in the stat sheet. Uh, for training purposes, I want to I want to know the duration of your touch. So if you're a pick and roll player, I want to know roughly how long your pick and roll play last is it six seconds is it three seconds is it on average eight seconds that's a very important number for me because i need to know how to prepare you in our training so if all your pick and rolls are on average eight seconds or six seconds right in our training all your pick and rolls are two seconds come off the pick and roll shoot well that's not going to prepare you for the demands of the game right what if teams don't let you play your first pick and roll so they trap you off your first pick and roll or they deny or something and then they only they force you to play a second pick and roll okay well as a player that i'm working with have i prepared them for that long of a play right does our training kind of match that uh mm -hmm. method if the coach wants him to be also a defensive player and pick up the other team's guard uh full court press can he do that and still play offense effectively. Those those are things you know that I'm looking at. Like how much is he moving on the court, etc. How is he moving? What directions is he moving? How many times is he sprinting up and down the court? What is average duration of his plays? Right. So uh, there are there are fancy analytics that can capture all that. But unless you're working for an NBA team and have access to their technology as a general person just watching the game off an of iPad you're not going to get that information. So that's that that's kind of like how I collect information before the off season starts. Those are the important mm -hmm. things. But in season, uh, obviously, I want to know what the player sees. Uh, I want to stick to general concepts, general heuristics that they can simple principles that they can think about versus like, mm -hmm. oh, you need to have your foot here or or whatnot. So you want to keep it very a little bit more general. I'm not saying you can't be specific. Of course, you can give them some specific feedback, but I just like to keep it. Let's keep the priority, the priority and what's the biggest thing that you can work on versus trying to tell them like you did 12 things wrong this game. I want you to fix these things. Well, guess what? The next game's going to look a little different, right? It's not going to look exactly the same. So you might not get the chance to do all those things, right? So I want to focus on principles of things I'm not seeing. So for instance, like, hey, you're being way too passive. Look at all these shots you passed up, right? You only took six shots in 36 minutes. Of course, I don't want my guy to be a ball hog and just shoot it every single time, but I might say like, hey, you had 10 shots that you passed up. So let's, let's focus on if you're open and you think it's a good shot, don't hesitate and just take it, right? Of course, like within the team offense and the team flow, don't don't be this like rogue player being like, oh, my coach said I need to get more shots up. So now you're just shooting up, shooting random shots.